Alléluia, Alléluia, Shalom, Shalom, people of God. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you abundantly. You will come back on this program of teaching based on the sound doctrine of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Samuel of the group Jésus Revient. And I just want to remind you that the group Jésus Revient is the international group of evangelists with the goal to teach the sound doctrine of Christ in order to bring back to holiness the people of God, the bride of Christ, so that they could be ready for the rapture. To start, let us pray now. Lord Jesus Christ, God of all flesh, all souls, and all spirit, we bless your name for this time. You have a beginning and the end. And I do believe, according to your faithfulness, you are leading us until the end of this second session of this series. I do believe also you will bless all our followers. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Let's say amen together. I want to sing one song that I love so much in English before starting our teaching. This song is, I've decided to follow Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. What about you, brothers and sisters? Can you take your decision today? May the Lord Jesus Christ help you and let you decide today. In our previous teaching, we talked about the spiritual meanings of the foundation of the prophets the foundation of the apostles, and also Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, before we spoke on the first two elements of the sound doctrine, knowing faith in one and only Savior, Jesus Christ, and the oneness of God and the supreme divinity of Jesus Christ. the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's say the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is an important doctrine because through it, Christ first engulfed up death by, the vic by his victory and resurrections on the cross. Jesus Christ had been rejected by the chief priests, the Pharisees, and denied by Judah, one of his disciples, who had sold him for 30 pieces of silver. This enabled Jesus to be crucified for the work of human redemption. This is why the death and resurrection, resurrection of Jesus Christ derived their source from the greatest work of salvation wrought by God in Jesus Christ for mankind, which is the work of the cross. Let's read Isaiah 33, 1, 10. In Isaiah 33, 110, we can read what we were announced. Who recognized the arm of the Lord? He rose up before him like a weak plant, like a shoot coming out or a pear sheet ground. He had never beauty nor luster to attract our attention, and his appearance had nothing to please us. Despised and abandoned by man, a man of sorrow and accustomed to suffering, like the one whose face we turn away, we scorn in him, we took no notice of him. However, is our suffering that he has borne, is our sorrow that he has taken charge, and we regard him as punished, smitten of God, and humbled, but he was wounded for our sin, broken 
for our iniquities. The punishment that gives us peace fell on him, and it's by his trip that we are healed, at which the believer must get rid of. Once in the world, thought of sedition, suspicion, corruption, we were all wandering like sheep. Each one followed his own way, and the Lord has laid down upon him the iniquity of us all. Alleluia. Alleluia. We have to know that Jesus reconciled the world to himself through his cross. He died in the flesh for our offenses and rose again for our enlightenment. For the lamb was to be smitten, humble, despised, and cursed for a sin, for a deliverance. The cross plays a great role in the dispensation of grace. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 say, And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith also is in vain. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was on earth, is indeed dead and risen. We believe he died for our sins and rose again for our lives. The intention is that by his resurrection will be in live need. Any church or denomination that denied the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is not of Christ. I want to remind you today, any church or denomination that denied the resurrection of Christ is not of Christ. As we can read it in the book of Luke. Luke 18, 32 to 33, for he will be delivered to the Gentile. They will mock him, they will insult him, they will spit on him, and after having beaten him with road, they will kill him, and on the third day he will be resurrected. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Jesus Christ will be resurrected to go ahead. Let's talk quickly of the Christian Passover according to the dispensation of grace that derives to that derives of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Passover, in fact, marks the deliverance of the people of God, Israel, from bondage to the promised freedom. Hallelujah. The origin of Passover is in Exodus 12. It was a foreshadowing of things to come in our time, grace. The lamb that had been slain to mark the lintel of the doors was indeed the image of Christ who was to come as a lamb according to the prophecy. You can read in the book of Isaiah 33. And humbling himself, despised his divine nature by becoming a simple man, as we can read in the book of Philippians. The work of the cross is a work of redemption and atonement for sin. It was then that, after the death of Jesus Christ, he was resurrected because he is the resurrection and the life. John 11, 25. The Passover in the new covenant is no longer to be commemorated like that of Judaism with regard to the immolation of animals and the sacrifices, but the true sacrifice of Jesus, who is the slain lamb, as John 1, 29 say, and the high priest. The Passover in the new covenant is our daily and unlimited remembrance of the work of the cross. In other words, of the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We as believers have this hope in the resurrection of the enlightenment and glorification through Jesus Christ our Lord, as Philippians 1, 20, 21 said. In the book of 1 Corinthians 5, 7, it said, Remove the old living, so that you may be a new doubt, since you are living for Christ, our Passover has been slain. Christ is our Passover, and Christ will always be glorified in our body. Philippians 1.20 say, According to my firm expectations and my hope that I will not be ashamed for anything but that 
Now, as always, Christ will be glorified in my body with full assurance, either by my life or by my death. If the Passover is the symbol of the glory of Christ, we must live it daily by always glorifying him and that there be more of Christ in us. Hallelujah! Christ equals spirit. Spirit equals Passover. Passover equals glory. Hallelujah! You can read in 1 Corinthians 6, 20. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is a fundamental doctrine of the faith. And those who oppose it are abusers of the spirit of grace and of the new covenant. Glory to Jesus. You can stay turned for the coming teaching. Be blessed. Amen.